Hey, welcome to Kate Crafts. I'm Kate. Today I would like to preface this video with an apology. I am sorry, I was supposed to announce the winner to my high supply giveaway just over a week ago, and time got away from me and my schedule became too busy and it just kind of slipped through the cracks. So the winners are as follows. Ann Smith, 1718, with love by Amy and Marcy M. You have one week to claim your prize, and I will throw in a little something extra of a surprise as an apology for my tardiness. So with that being said, here are some of the supplies I'll be using in today's quick card. I am using a Mama Elephant Circle Stitch Die as well as a Lawn Fawn Outside In Stitched Circle Die. And I'm creating a frame out of some white paper here. All I'm going to do is set aside the center and I'm going to keep that circle ring. Next I have got some shimmer card stock from Recollections and I'm going to cut it out in the purple and in this orange color on the outside in stitched rectangle die and then I will take a circle die that fits in between the frame kind of thing and cut out the center of both of the purple and orange and that way I can mix and match the purple and orange on the inside as you can see here. Next I will take a piece of this Recollections shimmer card stock that I have from a 12 by 12 pack and again, I will make a frame so I can cover up that white. Now this is just a base card. I end up putting more on it, but I lost all the footage. But I got the meat and potatoes of it, so. Next, I'm going to take that same die that I used to cut out um, the card base with. And I am going to create an acetate circle with it. And I will sandwich it in between the two pieces of paper. The glitter cardstock and the, I believe it's 110 pound cardstock. And I've got this eighth of an inch score tape that is just about done. And I'm going to go around the very edges of it just to make sure that the acetate is secured to the inner circle here, which will be touching the bit where all the shaker bits are going to be. So I'll pull off the release tape to all of this. And once I've gotten all those little bits and pieces, now I tried to go around continuously, but it did not work in my favor. So I ended up having to tear off as I went, uh, just to make it a little bit easier. I'm going around and making sure I've got a secure uh, hold on it. And because I like to glue everything down twice, I'm going to go in with some tape runner to try and go and make this as even as possible. I tend to go off the edges. I mean, I could have probably just used this itself instead of the score tape, but I was kind of winging this card. When I was recording this card, I, uh, I had already recorded a card prior to it, and I forgot to plug in my phone. So, like about 45 minutes into making this card, my phone powered down. <laughs> it ran out of juice. So you just get the base of the card, and I mean, even if you do this, or attempt to do this as well, you could jazz this card up any which way you like. So here I'm just fiddling with some more of this tape runner here, or easy tape runner, that's what it is, uh, and trying not to get it into the window. I will lay that glittery bit on top, mash it down, that way I've got a nice little window frame that I can add some foam tape to. Now, next up, I have already taped down the card base to the card, um, what do you call it? <laughs> the card base in the panel, the panel, that's it. The panel that I made to my card base without the circle in it. And I've got these circle foam thingies. I forget what they're called. I'll have to look them up. I'll make sure to leave it all in the description box below, but I bought these a while ago thinking, hey, these would probably be great to use, and I've never used them before. They're a little bit fiddly, so once I get that down to my liking, I will pick out the high supply mix. These are the clay bits uh, that I'm going to use in the shaker as soon as I can get them open. <laughs> My fat fingers don't want to work. 
and I'll dump a little bit in. Now, it took me a while to figure out which ones I wanted to use for this because there was just so many of them. And I thought I'd go with these. So I go back and I look to see what else I have. Maybe I'll throw in some stars. And uh, maybe. Then I think, well, I'll probably just pick out all the strawberries. Because this ended up being for my little cousin's first birthday. And I thought it'd be cute to add the pink and the white in it. Because she's just too darn adorable. And why not? And I figured the strawberries were a little too summery for what I was going. See, she was born in November, and strawberries are more of a summer thing, so I might just save the strawberries and use the little clay confetti pieces and uh, make the shaker out of that. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. Just picking out the little bits and pieces that I don't want with my big fat fingers, and I think I got them all. So I'll close that up so I don't spill. And then we're going to open up the little star confetti one. Now I love the colors in this. And I love how tiny the little stars are. And I think they're absolutely adorable. And they just give that extra to, to the inside of the stage, the shaker. I mean, it, the card base is already glittery enough. But this was really cute. So I thought I'd take this one step further as I'm thinking and I'm going to add in some more shaker bits. So as soon as I can find my shaker bits, as the jar I had, I'm going to pour these in. Now these are just a Recollections brand that I had. And they're just like little mini seed beads or micro seed beads. or They look like little tiny bubbles, which I thought was kind of cute. And against my better judgment, I decided to put in a little bit of the... Lawn Fawn glitter that I have here, and I don't have a little spoon, so I'm just going to take a little bit of this tape runner release tape thing and put a little bit in. Now, the reason why I made the faux pas of, or I think it's a faux pas of putting the glitter in, is that I didn't use anti-static powder on the window shaker, so the glitter ends up sticking to the window, which kind of detracts and makes the the frame a little cloudy but because this is glitter I just I just went with it it was it is what it is right so I've taped uh, the the foam tapes got some sticky bits to it so I just took that circle and put it on top to seal everything in now I'm gonna throw on some of this double-sided tape on the back I mean I could have used tape runner but again I wasn't exactly thinking about what I was doing, I just know I needed to get it stuck, and this is what I had close at hand. So once I've peeled off the release tape, I am going to grab some of that glue and make sure that this shaker element is glued down, secured to my card base. This way, if she wishes to keep it, hopefully it'll stand the test of time, but odds are I will probably make many more cards for her daughter. Uh, I wish I had a, pro a picture of the finished project, but I didn't take it because, like I said, my camera died like over halfway through this card. And the finished card actually currently resides on their mantle. So here we have the finished base shaker card. I hope you enjoyed the little quick video that I had for you. And as always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Take care.